It was going to be a simple learning exercise to dial in the cam and to test the piston to valve clearance on my 308 before starting assembly, but just as well we did it because dialing in the cam showed up a problem with the timing. So instead of being two degrees advanced as per the cam's grind, we found seven degrees advance in total, so five degrees more. The big question of course is, where did that extra five degrees come from? Is the cam wrong? Is the timing set wrong? Or is something amiss with our crankshaft keyway? The camshaft for this 308 red motor is a Crow Cam uh, 5761, quite a lumpy grind uh, just for fun. And I did do a camshaft video, so if you want more details about it, you can check that out. Now this exercise of dialing in the cam, it was just meant to be about learning. We did not expect it to send us down a rabbit hole, but down the rabbit hole we went. My engine building mentor Gary was there so I know we did all of this right. He's a Holden Gold certified technician. He really does know his stuff when it comes to these engines. I installed the camshaft, the oil pump drive and the cam retaining plate. Then installed the crankshaft uh, with main bearings but just for two main caps only, number one and number five and I just nipped up the nuts on the ARP studs and, and the bearings got a smear of engine assembly grease, of course. Next, I cleaned up and oiled up the new piston for cylinder one, installed it with rod bearings and a smear of the grease, but no rings, and again, just nipped up the rod bolts. The timing set went on next and I set the crank timing gear up at the zero keyway uh, on the gear for standard timing. We've lined up the timing chain with the that bronze bit, I guess, uh, plate with the dot on the cam gear and also the second uh, little bronze coloured plate with the dot on the crank gear. We set up Gary's degreeing wheel and went about finding top dead center for cylinder one. Now the method that we used was a bump stop or positive stop um, on the, the piston uh, and then checking the degrees on the wheel in both directions, uh, averaging it out and then resetting the degree wheel and a needle pointer to top dead center so then we could um, dial in the cam. Now I had soaked a couple of new hydraulic lifters in engine oil and we set them up in the block. We set up a, a dial indicator that was inches, not millimetres, on the intake lifter's flat edge, not the inside cup for the push rod. So this is not a how-to video for dialing in a cam and I do have links in the video description below to the videos that I watch to, to try and learn how this process works. But we basically used the dial indicator to check what the cam actually did compared to uh, its spec sheet. So Gary led this process the first time and Scotty and I kind of watched and participated a bit so that we could learn and on that day, we, we kind of went through it twice. Firstly, we measured at what degrees the cam opened and closed the intake lifter at 50 thou lift. And this is where our measurements showed everything was five degrees out, five degrees advanced in fact, over and above the two degrees of advance that is um, supposedly ground into this cam. So the intake uh, was opening at 13 degrees before top dead center, and it should have been eight degrees before top dead center. The intake closed at uh, about 37 after bottom dead center, and it should have been 42 degrees after bottom dead center. We went ahead and, and did exactly the same checking procedure on the exhaust lifter, just to um, double check our measurements in a way and the exhaust was opening uh, at 51 degrees before bottom dead center, and that should have been 46, and the exhaust was closing um, at one before top dead center, and it should have been four degrees after top dead center. 
The lobe centre lines were also out by five degrees. So the intake centre line was uh, 102 and it should have been 107. And the exhaust centre line was 116 and should have been 111. Now this cam has a duration of 230 at 50 thou for both intake and exhaust and the lobe separation angle um, of 109, all of those matched up perfectly with the cam sheet. The lobe maximum lifts were just a tiny bit off, but I don't think it's enough to worry. I, I thought it might be just, you know, human measurement error, but it turns out that our measurements were pretty accurate and shortly I will explain how I know. Now to try to get to the bottom of why we're five degrees out, a couple of days later Scotty and I bought another dial indicator and we did it again ourselves, twice. And we all got the same measurements. Now from my understanding, if valve timing and lobe centre lines are all five degrees more advanced uh, than they should be, then there are four possible causes for this. So potential cause number one is the cam's timing gear locating hole is in the wrong place relative to the dot that we use to align with the crank's timing gear. Potential cause number two is that the locating pin on the front of the cam was machined in the wrong place or the cam was uh, ground uh, a little bit off relative to where that pin is. I don't know what order those things happen in cam manufacture. Potential cause number three is that our measurement method had um, at least one fatal flaw in it that we were completely unaware of. And potential cause number four uh, is something's out with uh, where the crankshaft keyway is. Now I checked the timing gears with the timing set that came off my 308, which originally came from Crocams 2, and they matched up. So that kind of ruled out potential cause number one, that the timing set is, is likely just fine. Next potential cause was that the locating pin on uh, the camshaft uh, could be in a position that adds that additional five degrees of advance. So I contacted Crocams and after a bit of back and forth uh, diagnosis by email, they asked me to send the cam back for them to check. So I did. Now they measured it again uh, on their fancy equipment and they grabbed a few of their other, other comparable camshafts and measured them, I think really just to check that their equipment calibration was on. And my cam came out fine. They sent it back to me nice and clean with a fresh tube of assembly lube and the actual measurements that they got for uh, testing my cam. Now this is how I know that our maximum lobe lift measurements were accurate because they more closely matched the cam test sheet that Crow sent back to me. And turns out my cam has 1.4 degrees of advance actually ground into it, not exactly the two degrees, but Crow said that is within their spec. Anyway, Crow ruled out potential cause number two, that the camshaft locating pin might have been in the wrong place. It's not. At this point, I um, also posted a question on a Holden 308 Facebook group. Um, you know, if the cam checks out, then what else could be the cause for those five degrees of advance? I just wanted to see if there were any ideas we hadn't thought up um, that we could test. Now most of the comments were about checking if I was dialing in the cam right and I guess that was just another opportunity to be confident that we did uh, and that pretty much ruled out potential cause number four, uh, number three, that something was uh, totally wrong with our measurement procedure. No, nope, it was all good. Also, I learned that this is not unusual um, due to casting variations in crankshafts for the keyway to be out a bit. Uh, and a common suggestion was, was simply remove the crankshaft timing gear and retard it to the negative four uh, keyway. And that, that would compensate for this mystery extra five degrees of advance that we're getting. But a couple of suggestions led me to try the dialing in procedure just one more time. And it was to try the whole process again, but on another cylinder. 
So this time I did the whole procedure alone, really to lock in the process for myself. So I installed a piston in cylinder four, just like I did for cylinder one. And in a Holden 308, they're both at top dead center at the same time, but I did double check top dead center for cylinder four using the bump stop again. And it was still spot on from when we set it up for cylinder one. Then I went through the same degreeing process using um, our new dial indicator, but also with an extension that Scotty had bought so just to make it easier to set up the magnet on the deck of the block and then be able to reach the, the lifter. And guess what? We got all the same measurements from cylinder four that we kept getting um, on cylinder one. So does all this matter? Am I being too fussy? I mean, how many people don't even bother to dial in a new cam uh, and, and just run with unknown discrepancies like uh, in my situation? I honestly don't know. There is nothing more that I can think of doing to find the real cause of the extra five degrees of advance and the cause really that I'm left with, potential cause number four, is that the crankshaft keyway is out a bit. Um, how accurate was crankshaft manufacturing in the early 1970s anyway? I don't know. Maybe when I install the harmonic balancer, uh, it, it might become obvious. Like if the uh, timing mark on the balancer doesn't match the timing mark on the timing cover, we'll see. So what next? I'm going to take off the crankshaft gear and I'm going to retard it by four degrees. I'll dial in the cam one last time and if I get the measurements um, that close enough match the cam sheet, I am going to climb out of this rabbit hole and move forward with assembling my 308. Now, you know what to do if you're curious uh, to find out how that goes. So I'll see you next time.